I got a juice, juice. Ha. Juice, juice, juice. Said I got the What's up, what's up, y'all? I am Kendra from Bust the Blank, and you are watching Still Got the Juice TV, and we have the ticket. Yeah, the Trey M.H. in the studio. Yeah. How you feeling? What's up? I'm feeling all right. I love to I'm hear it. I love it. What well, you said, Ty? I said, I'm doing good today. I love that. I love that. So I'm so excited to hear from you and hear about you and hear more of what you got going on for this year. So, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's. So you dropped her in in February. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like the other day, really. Yeah, recent seven days. But yeah. I've been out for seven days. I love that, and it's such a great song. Yes. And you dropped Mixie in, in September of 2022. Of 2022. Yeah, so it's those two records talking really, really um, raw and vulnerable about relationship woes. Can you tell me more about that? Uh, about tell me you left her. <laughs> yeah. All right, good. Uh, I was going through uh, a depression stage at the time of Mixie of 2022. I was going through like a depression stage like when I wrote that song. So hurting is like really me getting over the feeling. You feel what I'm saying? Me being able to talk about it because I think I took like a year and a half off. It, that she was the main, the main reason, the main part of the reason, but it wasn't only that. It wasn't only that, but you feel what I'm saying? It took a major part of the reason why. So Mixie, that's how Mixie came along, just me just going through depression and just sitting around and stuff like that. And then I made her recently put out the video seven days ago. It's doing good. It's doing so good. It's doing so good. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to the director, right? Yeah, Widow Motion. He, he shoot all my videos. Oh, he shoot, good. Yeah, he shoot all my videos. I already told me we locked in. He shoot all my videos. How important is it for you to have, as an artist, for you to have someone that you trust with your visuals? Talk to me about that. It's a lot because I feel like the visuals is the is the is what makes the song. I so agree. I feel like if you're a visual, you can have a dope song and then everybody's like waiting for the video and then if the video is not up to par, it's like yeah, it's like quality. Try. It's like quality, like quality over quantity. For sure. So I'd rather have one. You can have ten whack. Whack videos, I can have one video that's so clean. Everybody, I'm going to overlook, I'm going to overlook you. Exactly. So, so that's how I move when it comes to that. For sure, man. I, I completely agree. But I love that you're honest with the fact, because we hear so much, especially with men and black men in, in particular, how they downplay um, heartbreak and relationships with women as saying, ah, fuck her, get over it. I don't know, what, what's, what's the thing I hear all the time, like, basically they throw bitches away, basically, yeah. you know what I'm saying, no matter if they're hurt or not, so I, I really I really appreciate that you're honest with, yo, nah, this took time, like, yeah. a lot of other things were happening in my life, yeah. plus this, it took time to get to where you are but now. I, but I feel like that's where all my music, and I feel like that's what's, like, really gonna keep me relevant, because hip-hop is a story. If you look back at it, if you look to listen to all the old school, all the legends, they telling their story. Do so you, you remember? Talk? Sorry. Nah, go ahead, go ahead. Do you remember the first impactful hip hop story that you heard? I was like, yeah, like this is real, I like this. Yo, you know what the crazy part is? And my pops could vouch for me too. I was I was a kid, so he got me the CD player, this blue CD player. And it was a Nas album. So the first song I ever heard was I Know I Can. Wow, that is that is a perfect first song. So so it's like that he's telling the story, but he's saying different stories in there and stuff like that. So it's like that's hip hop. Like you gotta tell your story, like you can't sure. talk about nothing else, you feel what I'm saying? Like and then that's, that's what I feel like people don't understand now nowadays. Mm -hmm. That you have to tell a story, that you have to tell your story. And tell, I'm so happy to tell your story because we can always, we always can tell when it's fabricated. We always can tell when it's like, nah, I don't believe you, you need more people. Yeah, I don't really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So how does a black man deal with heartbreak and a woman portraying him? Cause everybody's different. Yeah. So I could say for me, 
I just got over it. I don't. I, I can't. I can't really give you. I can't really give you a, an advice on it. I just got over it. It just was like on some. Like you just decided one day. Like, like I'm not gonna let this affect me anymore. It wasn't on some. Yo, I'm not gonna just let it affect me anymore. It's just me on some. Me just getting up and just starting to pick myself up. So I can't really even give advice on that. You still, is it people, still? Are you still in the process? Also, like. Yeah, yeah, because it don't, it's not, what, two years? It's been two years, a year and a half since when I pulled away from Mixie, after Mixie when I stopped. So yeah, it takes a little while, it takes, it takes a little minute for you to sit there and digest about what's going on, especially if you've been with a person every day. So it takes a little minute. So I can't really tell a person about that, because I just moved on. I completely, I feel that, I feel that. It's so hard to do yeah. that though, especially when you actually cared about a person, yeah. that shit is hard. Yeah. But going through the comments of Hurting, the official video, some supporters have dubbed your song and your music as pain music. Do you agree with that description? Yeah, I can see all my music is pain, is pain music, and all my music is relatable to certain people in certain kinds of ways. I try to make my music relatable, but yeah, I, I could agree pain music, yeah. What role does pain or hurt have in your music? What role does pain and hurt have Play in, in, in your creating process, like your creative process? Because I go through, I try to make my creative process to where writing things down that where I'm going through, like things that I'm going through through, through my life. So most of the things is like pain, so it's like really easy for me to sit there and write because I'm going through everyday life. I'm going through things every day in my life, so it's, it's like a diary for me. I feel like You know what I'm saying? It's like a diary for me. And I hear that a lot in your breakout project, Me Versus Me, and you dropped that in 2021. That was raw, vulnerable, relatable, all the things you're just saying, all the yeah. things you're talking about. So yeah. Completely agree with that. And you are about to, I don't know when, you're not going to tell the people when it's going to drop, but Letter to the Trenches, right? Or Letter yeah, to the Trenches. Letter to the Trenches. Trenches. Yeah, Letter to the Trenches, yeah. When? Tell, tell me anything that you can tell me about this project, because if it's anything like me versus me, it's going to have you in your feelings, it's going to have you really like. No, I feel like Letter to the Trenches me breaking out that me uh -huh. breaking out that like really talking about like you find i'm saying like i'm the like i'm the one like you find i'm saying like i'm the ticket like you find i'm saying like i'm the i'm the person that's going to do this and that and the third and make a way and stuff like that so i feel like this is really and this is a solid project because i really sat down and really took my time and really wrote so i feel like letter to the trench I can't wait to that. I can't wait to. I can't. How many wait. tracks can you tell us? Um, it's gonna be a six track. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be an EP. But what I'm doing is, is that since I took so long with going, the the things that I was going through, um, I'm trying to come back myself, like drop songs, drop singles, and see what the people is messing with, and see what the, like really try to see which way. Cause I'm trying to be like on a perfect timing with it. I know it's not really now no perfect time with, with it, but I'm trying to like make sure like like it's correct. Like everything everything is correct. Like I don't. It wouldn't make sense if I drop if I drop a single and then turn around and drop a project and I've been out of music for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I understand that I owe, but you feel me? You gotta it take it just take time. But let it to the trench yet. You know what I love about being an independent artist is that you don't have to follow the mold of signed artists. Mm -hmm. So usually with signed major label artists, they do the single, single, drop, drop. But as an indie artist, you can do whatever it is that you want to do or yeah. whatever it is that the, the data is telling yeah. you. So it's really, really a great idea for you to drop the singles and see which one um, your supporters and your fans are really gravitating towards and then push that and promote that. Because now the type of music that I'm making, uh, the type of music that's going on in New York City or uh, drill music, it wouldn't make no sense to sit there and, dro and drop a whole full project and uh, drill music is going on right now. Like it's, still, it's a wave in New York City 
and you drop a whole project and nobody really listens to it. Mm-hmm. Now, if you are an artist that don't buy your beats and don't do this and don't do that, then it's free. Then it's a freebie. Right. But if you talk about an artist that's fully developed, that sit there, buy his beats, do this, and make sure everything is on point, he's going to make sure that he drops whenever he feels like it's a value. Oh, yo, this is a good time to drop. Mm-hmm. You feel me? It's all about the strategy with this with with, with, with this music that I feel like. It's all, it's all a strategy. And then I get the uh, being around different, because I be around celebrities and stuff like that, different type of celebrities, music videos and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I get inspired by stuff like that, just seeing them do different things. I feel like it makes me go harder with the people that I know. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I love that. So. If you could write a letter to the trenches, what would you say? As far as in what? Any sort of message from where you, because what I understand, and I could be wrong, but from what I, what I get from that title, aside from, like you said, who you are now, who you've become, it's also about looking back at where you started. Yeah. And now you've grown and, um, and evolved to the man that you are now. So what, what would you say to yourself uh, when you first started um, making music you said in 2019? Basically, because 2019, I came from the feds, so that's when I started making music. Like, I came home from the feds and came out the halfway house and decided to make music. Mm. So what was that decision? Like, how did you get, how did, how did that decision even Oh, uh, that decision? Manifest? Well, I was locked up. I think I had probably a year or so to left to come home. I, I was talking to my brother on the phone. My mom just had passed away when I was in jail, so. I'm sorry. Nah, I I yeah. Uh, so I was on the phone with him, and he was like, yo, you should do music. You should come and, 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 and take music serious. So I used to be writing in my uh, <laughs> in my bunk and stuff like that. Come back to the phone, let him listen to a couple freestyles that I done wrote and stuff like that. And then when I came home, it's just like I got the urge to do it. I came out the halfway house, and then it was like my man's was like studio. And then from there, that shit just started taking me places. You feel what I'm saying? Like, to the point where it's like, it's, this shit is not even pride no more. Like, it's not even the pride no more. Like, it's not even like, yo, it's over. Like, I could have been quit. Like, you feel me? A year and a half ago when I was going through depression, like, yo, fuck this shit. You get what I'm saying? So it's, this, shit is, this shit is crazy. I'll just say to the trenches to stay out the way, get some money, man. Stay out the way, get some money. Watch who you hang with. Regular, regular, regular stuff. Just focus on yourself. Just focus on you. Nobody ain't gonna do it for you. You gotta do it for yourself, man. Completely, completely, man. man. I love your story. Man. I. I'm on, like I'm so excited to see that you keep evolving and keep evolving and keep growing and growing and the artist that you're gonna be at the end of this year. Yeah. I need you to come back when um, your album is out, when the EP is out, and I want to. I'm man, really excited to see. I got a couple big drops coming, man. Oh, Before what can that, you tell us? Of, like you just keeping us. I got a couple big drops. Oh, I could tell you right now because it's finished. Okay. Um, I got something with Dice Face O coming. I got a video now soon ready to drop with Dice. And then I got a couple more features that I got in the cut. And you know, okay. it's tuck. But I just got to shoot videos to the rest of my features. But the Dice one is ready, it's ready to go. And then we just take it from there. Then that's when I, you feel me, after I put in the work. That's what I said. After I put my, put my work in, then that's when I sit there and I drop letters to the trench. You know what I want to ask you before you go, and forgive me if this is a bit redundant, but I just feel like mental health in the black male space is so important, and there's so many black men that are going through going through depression and who are suicidal and who have suicidal ideation and all these things. We want them to stay here. We want them to, you know, continue. So, is there anything that you could say that worked for you to help you get um, your hope back? Well, I'm a fan of depression, man. You a being, fan of depression? Like being depressed, like like me being depressed, like you why? The the things that I was going through, like going through the stuff that I was going through for a year and a half. You know what I'm saying? Like 
I'm a fan. You just gotta push yourself, like. You feel what I'm saying? You just. But for the people who hear that all the time, what does that even look like? Getting up, just telling yourself, giving yourself that type of motivation, talking to some certain people that love you, that want to see you win. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Having people, the right people in your corner. So it's a lot. It's a lot of things that you could do. That you feel, it's a lot of things. But I'm a fan, but I, I do be depressed a lot. I, I was depressed a lot. And I still do be depressed a lot now that I be thinking about a lot of situations. But at the end of the day, you got to keep pushing because you're going to be depressed. What? Years going to go by, another year going to go by, another year going to go by. So you just, you just got to keep. Just I feel like what I'm, what I'm getting from what you're saying, though, is like, I feel like it's temporary. Yeah, you know? the feeling is the yeah. feeling is definitely temporary. Yeah. It's not the end of the world because eventually you remember that. Then you, you could keep going forward. Eventually you get over it. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. You walk over it. That's that's what it's about. And your your gifts will make room for you as yeah. you as you have said. Like you came from the feds, now you're here. Now you're making here. music now like making out music. of the worst possible emotion emotional feeling that you could have possibly had you made mixy. Made mixy. And from there hurting hurt again you, you making music out of nothing, out of hurt, out of pain. Out that, of pain. That's magic. Now I wouldn't even call it magic. That's 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 a blessing. Yeah that is a yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Of course man, of course. And I wanna see you win. Cause again, me versus me was sick. <laughs> it is sick. Yeah, so it is. look out everybody. Look out. Look it's out a lot on the, the way. Yeah, the ticket, a lot on the way, man. I love that. So, listen, we're going to keep our eyes on you for the rest of 2024 and going forward. Yes. But before you go, I want to know what does it mean for you to still got the juice? First, you got to get the juice first to have the juice. <laughs> you you got to get the juice. That's my answer. You got to get the juice first to have the juice, man. That's my answer. All right, perfect. Listen. This has been Still Got The Juice TV. I am Kendra from Bust The Blank. Thank you so much, Trizzy, yeah. Trey, and Mage for coming yeah. and chatting it up with me. I appreciate your time, brother. You're ready. You're ready. Yeah. No. Shout out Still Got The Juice. Perfect. And it's a wrap, y'all. Yeah.